Hey everybody, and welcome back to Legendary Language Learner. I'm Matthew Boyle, and today I'm playing a game of heading into language land solo. I'm not really going to explain how to play in this video. I might think out loud a little bit, I might narrate a little bit, but if you want to understand better how the game's played, you can watch some of the previous videos in this playlist, the Heading Into Language Land playlist. Uh, for now, today, I'm just going to jump right in so you can see what this looks like when we play. This is my character. This is the board made of some cards from the deck, and this is some uh, this is the deck of leftover cards that will refill the board spaces when the time is right. This is my points counter and also my pawn, and this is to roll for a chance. Okay, let's get into this language learning adventure game. I want to move to here. It's an enemy. Five. So I should say an idiom in order to attack and destroy this character. Now I'm going to look at my study guide, which comes with the game in electronic form. You can print it out, or you can just work with it on your computer or tablet or whatever. An idiom came up in my last solo game, so I've researched it and written it down. Chen Yu Luo Yen, which means um, sinking fish and falling geese. It's meant to describe extreme beauty. Um, obviously, I'm learning Mandarin, that's my target language, but you can use this game for any target language you're after. Okay, so I destroyed this character, and he goes back under to the bottom of the deck, refill this space, I go up one point and move to this space. Now that completes one turn. Okay, turn two. And uh, I'm actually going to use a power text. I haven't used power text much in the videos before. You can play this game in a basic way or the advanced way, which is to incorporate the power text the cards have. You don't have to use power text on the cards, and that keeps the game really simple. But if you want to use them, you can. The power of this guy, Wrinkle Root, is you can look at any face down card before you move. So I could look here and see, oh, it's a sword. Okay, yeah, I might like to have that sword. So I'm gonna say that I do want to move to this card. Okay, now let's do it. Flip it over. And uh, to pick up something that you want, you have to refer to the word categories on the card that you want to pick up. This is a pick up. It says pick up under the name. Two, I have to say a weapon. I will say da pao, which is cannon. And then I get to take this card and add it to my team. Now normally I might, I might keep my team cards down here closer to me, but I'm just trying to keep them on camera for you. But so, so now I have the sword, which is uh, on my team. And I get to refill this, move to here, and also I go up one point. So this sword, the power of this sword, it says I can add one to my battle rules. You do battles when you play with other players, so that's not really going to help me much in a solo game. It will help me somewhat, because when you have many team cards, you can look across the categories on all the cards that you have when you want to achieve your objectives. So this effectively gives me more options of things that I can talk about. So it does help me in that way. Okay, I'm going to use his power text again to look here and see if this is somewhere that I really would like to go. Okay, it's a location. And I think I could talk about many of these categories here. So it's a pretty safe place for me to go and just earn a quick point. So I am going to go there. Now to enter a location, you have to refer to the word categories on the location. Two. So I have to say a weather a type of weather. I will say yu, which is rain in Chinese. Now I'm not totally sure if that's the correct tone, so I'm just going to make a note over here on my study guide to check the word yu and make sure I said that with the right tone. 
And I can also write rain and canon into my study guide later just to confirm and really lock those down. Again, this is the study guide I'm working with over here. It has all the cards in the game with all their categories, examples of the categories. In the PDF electronic version, you can hit links to see definitions of, of all the examples and all the categories. And then you can write your examples over on the right side. So I'm gonna be trying to fill this out from Mandarin as I keep playing along. Okay, so I succeeded, succeeded there. Locations always remain face up and in place where they are discovered. So as you play it and more and more locations come up, it's sort of gonna be kind of building up a map full of locations where people want to go. Different locations have different benefits and advantages. So I will move to there and also go up to six. For example, this location card says during the direction phase, you can set a direction to any location. So that means when I'm deciding where to go, if I'm leaving this card and I'm deciding where to go on my next turn, I can leave this location and go to any location on the board. So it facilitates rapid movement. Okay, let's try one more. Again, I'm gonna use his power to see, to try to get a preview of where I might go and see if I really wanna go there. Okay, it's a friendly character, so I could possibly add him to my team and his categories are not too difficult. So yes, I, I want to go ahead and move there. Um, and to win over an ally to your team, you have to refer to the word categories on the allies card. I know he's a friendly character, I know he's an ally, because we have the same color name. Okay, a five. So I should say a handicraft. And I can say one that I learned in my last solo game, which is shi zi xiu. And that means cross stitch, which is very popular in China. You can see I already noted it onto my study guide here for the wordsmith handicraft category, because this came up in my last solo game. And I showed you guys that. I left my homework in the comments of that YouTube video. So I successfully call him to my team. And then I'm going to refill that board space, move to here, and go up to seven points. So I'm here now. So as my team grows, there's going to be more special powers that I could potentially use. Also, if an enemy comes up, I can look at any of the categories on any of my team cards in order to destroy that enemy. So for example, if I rolled, well not a one, a one would be bad luck and I would just take a damage. Six means I can choose my own category. That means I can choose any category that I want on any card. But let's say I rolled a three. Then I could look at category three here, here, or here in order to attack. So when you get more allies and more pickups, that helps you to have more options. Also, one more thing I should add, if you move onto the same space as another player, like this is a solo game, but if I was playing with other people and I moved onto the same space as them, when I attack, I also get to look at all of my cards when I make the attack onto the, uh, to the other player. Okay, but that's it for today's game. I hope this gives you a little insight as to how the game actually works. If you want to learn more, you can view the other videos in this playlist. And you can also visit legendarylanguagelearner.com to subscribe. You can go to languagecardgames.com to subscribe. And then you will know when the game is coming out. I'm hoping to put it out this year but I'm not going to adhere to a strict timeline on this. I'm still working out some of the fine details. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you back here next time. Bye-bye for now.